Today the Tour de France 1993 goes into the mountains and this is the top of the Col de Galibier, the high spot of stage 10. Two days ago, Miguel Indurain proved he was the king of the time trial. Today he must prove he is also the king of the mountains because the rest in this race will surely attack him. And at 10 o'clock this morning, the Tour de France ended its day of rest and was now heading out for its first appointment with destiny, the Alps. The riders rolling away from Villard de Lens, heading now for the mountains. The first stop, the Col de Glandon, 1,951 metres. And then it will be on to the Col de Telegraph, taking the riders at 1,566 metres on a stepping stone towards the giant Col de Galibier, 2,645 metres. Soon after that, it's all downhill. The riders finishing in Ser Chevalier, 204 kilometers the distance. The first sprint of the day came at Lons en Vercors, just a few kilometers down the road. A chance for the green jersey, Mario Cipollini to show his colors, beating here Abdu Japarov and Jan Zurada. Racing conditions for the day will be quite difficult. Although the skies will clear up later in the afternoon, in the valleys the rider will have 20 degrees Celsius temperatures but only six degrees at the top of the mountains, which will make it very difficult and cold with the chill factor on the way down. As soon as the climbs began, it was Stefan Collage from the Italian ZG team who started the attacks. He was alone in the lead, but by the time they came to the top, his lead was one minute and 10 seconds. Then the riders formed a group, which included Charlie Motte, Thierry Clavarola, Pedro Delgado, and Raul Alcala. In all, they caught Collage and formed a group of 19 riders. After four hours in the saddle, they were now on the climb of the Col de Telegraph. Zenin Yaskula in the front here and Stephen Roach were trying to reach the front group. But clearly the pace was hurting Stephen Roach. The move failed, but what he did was springboard the attack that would come from the heads of state, as it were. Tony Rominger, followed by Andy Hampston. And then, not far behind, Miguel Indurain in yellow and the world champion Gianni Bunyo alongside him. At the top of the Col de Telegraph, the group had not been caught, though. Thierry Claverola out sprinting Pedro Delgado. Third over the top was Thierry Bourguignon. But soon the race would be together and the next stop would be the Col de Glibier. And the picture has changed again now because we're halfway up the Col de Glibier, perhaps not quite halfway up. And this is Alvaro Mechia, who's making contact now with the four new leaders who went away only three kilometers after the start of the climb of the Col de Glibier. Miguel Indurain at the yellow jersey, ripped away from the leaders, taking with him Andy Hampston, Tony Rominger. The man that caused the split really was Zenit Yaskula. And now, as we speak, just latching on the back, the other Motorola climber, Alvaro Mechia. These, there are now five riders in the lead, but there are others not too far behind. Well, riders who are a little bit further down the road are Eric Brooking, who's trying to get back into contention with those five leaders. Much further down at 1 minute and 20 seconds is Gianni Bugno, the world champion. Also in that group is Perico Delgado. This is Richard Virong, the wearer of the yellow jersey last year, who's trying to leave the group of Bugno. Bugno's had a very hard day again today in the mountains. He got dropped off on the first climb of the telegraph. He forced his way back to the Miguel Indurain group and then was dropped again, and he really does seem to be suffering on the climbs. But this rider, Miguel Indurain, again is stamping his authority on the Tour de France. He just goes to the front and he causes pain right down the line here. Zenon Yaskula, who has ridden the Tour only once before last year, he didn't finish it, has ridden so well today. He's promised in the early stages he would do a good ride. Now he's showing us. And Tony Rominger, sadly losing so much time in that team time trial, where would he be now? without losing not only the time in the team time trial down at Avranche, but also receiving a one minute time penalty because two of his teammates helped each other then. Well, he'd be very much closer to Miguel Indurain, that's for sure. And I think it would be a big battle because in fact, when this group initially went away, although it was Yaskula who jumped away from the group, Tony Romiga was the man who made a big tempo on the previous climb that taught the, the telegraph to pull away the group. And in fact, Miguel Indurain was just marking him and now he finds himself in the front and Rominger really is in excellent form and 
I think I was talking to one of the Swiss journalists early today, he said as long as the temperature stays down, it could be Rominger's tour this year because he does worry about the hot climbs. Henny Kuiper there having a little word with his new acquiring, acquiring new rider this year, Alvaro Mechia, who really we thought by the time we got over the telegraph he was in some sort of trouble because his name wasn't mentioned and all of a sudden he quite clearly pulled across from the bunch which contains Kiapucci right up to the leaders. Must have been a tremendous effort. We never actually saw it. An incredible ride because he was at least one minute behind at the bottom of this climb and he's come up on the climb to the, far, the four leaders to make five in the front now. But Mechia during the winter time actually nearly didn't have a contract and he was only picked up at the last minute by Motorola. He had a contract with the Postabon team, the Colombian team that you remember from previous Tour de France's and it looked as if the team was going to fold and in fact they never managed to get the team off the ground and Colombia was uh, very fortunate to place this rider into the Motorola team. Let's have a look now at the main field here and see if we can also find signs of Claudio Chiapucci. Here's Laurent Fignon on the right. There's Claudio Chiapucci, I think it is. No, it isn't. And it, yes, it is on the far side there. There he is and not looking at all happy. And the other name missing from here, Paul, I haven't seen Alex Zula. Well, Zula was in the group with Chiapucci before and there is so much happening at the moment. Riders are moving forward and then getting dropped again. I'm very surprised to see Barney Rice in the orange and yellow, orange, red and yellow jersey on the far side. I thought he's a rider who would have got blown away in the mountains, but obviously riding one of his best Tour de France's. Now, Romiga, matching at least Miguel Indurain for the moment on the highest climb today, but there's more even higher tomorrow, one more at least. And Alvaro Mejia, he's, the way he's riding now, Paul, just behind Romiga, he looks as though he's actually holding himself back here. I think he must be, really is an exceptional climber and they've always regarded him as being the, the heir to the throne of uh, uh, Herrera, the fantastic Colombian climber who was around for many years before that because his advantage over Herrera is the fact that he can ride an excellent time trial. This is another rider, Colombian rider, who he was with at the time. This is Oliviero Rancon of the Amaya team. In fact, he was coming across the gap with Mechia and he must have dropped him just before they made the junction. He's suffering now to try and come up to the leading group of five riders. Col de Galibier, first climbed in 1911. First time the High Alps were included in the Tour de France and the gear that they used then, believe it or not, for all uh, of you riders who would like, and, and many of you do come over here to ride, 22 teeth on the front chain wheel and 11 on the rear sprocket. And that compares in modern day racing. The riders today, like Eric Broeking, who are watching at the moment, probably pedaling a varying gear range of between 39 on the front and 21, 22 or 23 on the back. It's been a big advantage for riders coming through nowadays. The, the innovation of bringing the, the smaller chain rings in again down to 39, that means they can have a, a much closer ratio at the back so they don't have to worry. This looks now, if we're looking down on Stephen Roach, who was in that fray just a little bit earlier and it looks as if Roach has suffered expecting what he was what he thought all along was going to happen to him. He would have a bad day in the mountains. I thought maybe he wouldn't, but now it appears that Roach is suffering. Well, a lot of Italian people here. They've come just over the borders today to watch the heroes hopefully take on and beat uh, Miguel Injure. But here's one who is cracking under the effort, Claudio Chiapucci, riding this year his fifth Tour de France and his finishes over those five years. He's had a second, a third, and last year he was second and has also had a couple of stage wins. He's been the king of the mountains too for the last two years and in fact yesterday it was Stephen Roach who told me that after that time trial where Chiapucci rode so badly he was going to concentrate on winning the king of the mountains for a third successive year. He'd become only the third rider to do that in fact but look at this today in the mountains we are and Chiapucci is a long way behind these riders we're looking at now. Tony Rominger looking across to Andy Hampston who's looking very very good the winner out Duez last year. In tow, the yellow jersey, Miguel Indurain, as always, cool, calm and collected. You can't see what's behind those glass sunglasses, you don't know how he's feeling. And Alvaro Mejia, something of a surprise, but he's up here now and could well be the winner by the time we get down to Sir Chevalier. Zenon Yaskula is the other man in the breakaway. We'll just take a short break. A 
Ah, welcome back to the Tour de France in the Alps on its first day. The face of Miguel Indurain, the rider they all came to beat, and in fact, he's controlling them very nicely. Thank you on the climb here of the Col de Galibier. These five riders now pedaling steadily clear of a disintegrating Tour de France field behind them. And now we go down the mountain here, about three and a quarter minutes behind. Gianni Bunio has been picked up by a group containing Alex Zula. He's the tall rider at the front in the pink. But judging by the way he's labouring on the slopes here, now in the high Alps, he himself is not enjoying the ride at all today. He's in the sort of company he wouldn't expect to be in. Now, Ramon Gonzalez is the rider at the back of this group in the Festina colours. And earlier on, he was up in the lead group and he's also struggling. There's a long way now. Uh, this group is a long way uh, behind the Indurain group, which is approaching the summit. We're now with the leader of the Tour de France and the leader of the stage on the road, Miguel Indurain, making it look oh so easy now. But he will have the problem of two Motorola riders in this group and remember that today this race doesn't finish uphill that's tomorrow it finishes downhill and there is plenty of time for tactics uh, to be played for well there is but I feel that the way that uh, Zenon Yaskulo has been riding he may well be the man if this group stays together to provide this to provide a surprise in the finish there because he's a very clever rider a strong rider and I'm surprised really to see him riding so well in the mountains but who knows Miguel Indurain, the way he's riding at the moment, maybe he's going to transform himself into a sprinter. Well, he's, he's riding now in the manner of Eddie Merckx. He's killed them in the time trials, and now he's trying to do the same in the mountains and really prove that he is the best complete all-round bike rider. But Eric Breuking, riding in his best form for years in the Tour de France. He was in trouble on the Col de Telegraph, but he climbed back to them, and he's now trying to climb back to them here as they approach the top of the Col de Glibier. If he could do that, he could well be the stage winner down in Seche Valier because the finish would suit him. Five kilometres, three miles now to the summit of the Col de Galibier and Miguel Indurain still tapping out the rhythm with the same five riders that came together in the opening kilometre of the climb. The vast big climb today and the attack coming first of all at the bottom of the climb by Zenon Jaskula of Poland and then Miguel Indurain himself caused the reaction that split up the leading group and now they settle down. A lead of around about 50 seconds over Eric Broeping, so it looks as though he's been pegged for the moment and there's confirmation, 52 seconds in fact. And then Eric Broeping has shed himself of the rest of the race and he's trying desperately to make contact. It looks, Paul, in fact as though Yaskula is sitting just off the back of this group now and it's beginning to hurt. Well, I think if I was Jaskula, I'd be sitting at the back of the group as well because if you're at the front in the Tour de France with riders like Miguel Indurain, Tony Rominger, and a climber like Alvaro Mejia and Andy Hampson, I think I'd just try and survive till the top. This is Eric Broeking. 52 seconds, the last time check we had on Eric. And he has now, looks to me as though he has cracked and the riders are going to go away from him. We'll shortly go past the memorial stone to Henri de Grange, the grand father of the Tour de France, who now proudly looks out across the mountains here in the Alps. The information just coming through there, Eric Brooking really has cracked because he's now pointed at 1 minute and 30 seconds behind these leaders, and so really must be slipping back quite away. Rominger trying now for the prize at the first to the top it's not just the prize for the climb today but it's also the prize of the Henri de Grange trophy which is always fought out on the years that the race comes up the Col de Glibier and Indurain looks as though he wants that as well all downhill once he comes over the top putting the pressure on a little bit here Miguel Indurain in fact Andy Hampson had lost 10 or 15 lengths there and I wonder where the Saskulak has managed to stay in contact as well. You see now the three riders moving a little bit further away. And as Indurain sprints for the summit, he is over four minutes ahead now of uh, Alex Zula. And that's official. And Zula losing three minutes in the time trial, four minutes at the moment today, which makes seven in two days of racing in the Tour. Well, this is a marvellous crowd, and they say it's going to be ten times as thick tomorrow when we go to Isola with all the famous climbs, the Col d'Isoire, Col de Var, as well on the route. 
and Interrain's rhythm now is just keeping two riders up with him, Rominger and Mekia. And it looks as if Hampson has got dropped off the back there. Indurain just putting the pressure on as they come up to the top of the climb. What a ride he's doing today. And Rominger always keen to go through, always keen to work because he nicks now that he can move right up the overall classification tonight. Rominger goes over in first place. Indurain quite easily in second. Mekia in third. Now we have to see just how far behind those other two riders are. Coming up towards the summit then for Eric Brooking. Zenon Yaskula has also gone over the top. So too Andy Hampson. And Brooking coming up and losing a lot of time in his last two kilometres. He up goes the zip on his racing jersey as he starts the long descent. Two minutes, 13 seconds behind along there with Olivier Rincon. And this is Laurent Fignon, who's done another great ride for an AG veteran and twice winner of the Tour de France. This is the big fight out now as the riders struggle to limit their losses. Here is Alex Zula being brought up the climb now. He's a long, long way behind. The rider with the crash helmet on. Look at his face now. Zula conceding five and a half minutes to Indurain. His tour is over as far as that yellow jersey is concerned for sure now. And the grimace from Laurent Fignon, the winner of the Tour de France in 1983 and 1984, being followed there by Bjorn Rees of Denmark who also has ridden very well today. He's not really distinguished himself in the mountains in the past, but he comes over with the Fignon group, six minutes and 29 seconds down. And uh, uh, just at the back there, we see Gianni Bugno. So Gianni Bugno loses six minutes, 29 seconds on the climb, and he won't recover much of that now on the way down. Now we're halfway down the descent here of the Col de Glibier. As we go back up to Miguel Indurain, this is Eric Broeking still trying to make contact at 18 kilometres to go to the finish. And here is the big loser, my goodness me, Claudio Chiapucci, who wanted to win the King of the Mountains as a consolation prize, has been dropped today by 7 minutes and 44 seconds. Chiapucci, another big loser in the Tour de France in the Alps. And now the chase off the top of the Col de Galibier as we head down towards the Lauteray and the descent down to the finish at Serre Chevalier, 16 kilometres, that's 10 miles remaining. And the ride is now hitting speeds of anything up to 100 kilometres an hour. This is a very, very good descent. Very few sharp bends, you can go as fast as you can pedal. And Indurain knows now, every pedal rev is eliminating his rivals even more. This is Eric Brooking and he has a serious problem with his gears here. I've just seen the chain jam up and it looks as though the gears are about to break off. That'll be a bike change for Eric Brooking, I think, Paul. Not so bad for him, really, because fortunately the Onse team car was straight there and he's lost 10 or 15 seconds, but that is a shame for him because he's lost his rhythm and it won't be too good for his morale either. into the last kilometre for the three leaders and they're now leaving Indurain out in front to try and outmaneuver him for the first prize. The first prize, the same every day in the mountain stages, £5,200 for the first man over the line. The overall prize in the Tour de France, £225,000. And now Indurain still leading them towards the line. The man in yellow that beat them all in the time trial. He smashed them out of sight today by similar time gaps over the first mountain stages of the Tour this year. And he's trying desperately to ride them off, but Rominger is thinking about it now as he looks to see Wemeki. This is the corner. Very difficult one as they take it, and they take it wide indeed. Come back into our picture. They're all still upright. Then there's another one, and then they will see the finishing line, see how tight it is. And Rominger is going to take his first stage victory in the Tour de France from Mekia and Indurain. They'll all come in in the same time. And uh, five hours and 28 minutes is the time today. And this is Eric Broeking, his bike change. He's done well to ride back up to this rider out in front who should be Javier Morleon. And these are the other two riders who were sharing the lead with the top five riders up the climb of the Col de Galibier. Zenon Yaskula who started the attack right down at the base of the Galibier and then paid the price near the top. Now leading Andy Hampton towards the finish. 
The first three are home, and the clock is counting on the left of our screen, the time gap. Another emphatic day today for Miguel in Jurain, but even so, these two are spits out now, fourth and fifth place, and it looks as though Andy Hampton is going to try it. Oh, it's very, very close. That'll go to the photograph. And into the finish in Sir Chevalier, and it working despite that stop for a bike change. He's got back up with Olivier Rincon. And they're coming in together, the champion of Holland, bringing them round. He's tried over these last couple of millimetre, uh, kilometres rather to limit his losses. He has raced all the way to the line because he may be losing time to Indrain, Rominger and Hampston. But he's gaining time over Gianni Bugno, the world champion. And that is for sure as he comes up to the line, 3 minutes 31 seconds down in sixth place. Well, the leaders may be in, but our cameras have gone back out to the top of the Col de Galibier, and look at this, the green jersey of Mario Cipollini just going over the summit, and that puts him 27 kilometres behind the leaders today. And another loser today, Alex Zula, comes in at just seven minutes down on the winner. And the group containing the world champion, who after that time trial did seem that he was riding on good form, but he couldn't tame the mountains today in the Alps. Laurent Frignon brings home Gianni Bugno, 7 minutes and 41 seconds down. He's won many of the greatest races in the world, and now Tony Romingo has won his first stage in the Tour de France today, outspending Alvaro Mejia and Miguel Indurain. A minute and 13 seconds later in fourth place, Andy Hamston followed home by Zenin Jaskula. Eric Broeking, the champion of Holland, chased all day and finished in sixth place. But once more, Indurain has broken the hearts of some of the greatest bike riders in the world. Alex Zula loses nearly seven minutes. Yanni Bunya, the world champion, seven minutes, 41 seconds. Stephen Roach and Claudio Chiapucci, almost nine minutes. I'm not surprised, though, that Tony Rominger was happy and straight after he stepped down off the podium, he was with Paul Sherwin. Are you surprised about the explosion of so many riders like Bunya and Chiapucci today? Because Really, everyone was waiting for tomorrow. Yes, it's a, it's a big surprise, but it's... When we are looking at the, the last Tour de France, always the first day in the big mountains is, the, is always the interesting day. And it was the last year, it was two years ago, and also this year, I, you are seeing always this. The, they are all good, and then they try to do something, and there are some bodies going back. What about one quick word to Miguel Indurain today? Uh, he's the number one. Uh, we, we saw it also together. The elimination time today was set at 49 minutes and the two British riders, Robert Miller and Sean Yates, were well inside that. They finished in a group just over 21 minutes back. The sprinters, though, they had to race for their lives off the top of the Col de Glibier. Jamaluddin Abdu Japarov, Max Chiandri and the green jersey of Mario Cipollini, they lost today more than 33 minutes. Miguel Indurain still holds the Tour de France in an iron grip. He leads tonight by 3 minutes and 8 seconds over Alvaro Mechia. Zenon Yaskula is now up into third place, breaking his fourth. Tony Rominger climbs to fifth. Of the others, Andy Hampson is now sixth. Gianni Bugno is down to ninth. Alex Zuller is tenth, but over 11 minutes behind. Stephen Roach, two drops to twelfth. And look at this, Claudio Chiapucci, once a favourite in the Tour de France, now almost 14 minutes behind. This, they say, was the easier of the two days in the Alps. Tomorrow they climb immediately the Col d'Isoire. Then they go on to the Col de Vars, and then they climb over the highest road in Europe, the Col de la Bonnette. And then they finish on the climb of Isola 2000. Another hard day indeed. Today, though, the stage belonged to three men, Miguel Indurain and the two who could stay with him, Tony Rominger of Switzerland and Alvaro Mechia from Colombia. Until tomorrow from us all here in France, goodbye.